Mera. I can't do it. Why? I'm liking what's happening in the back. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jennifer Glatzo, if you could call me Jen. I am a musical theatre performer and a voice teacher. And today, you can tell from the title that I will be reacting to someone new. Um, I've not reacted to this group before, so this is gonna be fun. As you can see from the title, I will be reacting to and analyzing Here to Stay by Korn. Now this was requested by someone that you already know. Thank you, Ian. <laughs> No, no, before you ask, I did ask, I, I, I did ask, Ian, is there anything that you think I should react to that I haven't reacted to up on my channel yet? Like, what would be a good kind of direction to go in? And there's a list. There is a list. If you watched my recent reaction with voice play reacting to You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch, I did say that I was going to go slightly elsewhere before the end of the new year. And this is what I was talking about. I think... This is a little break from the Christmas stuff that I've been doing. I'm just gonna take a wild guess. But as always, this is a reaction and analysis video, so I will be stopping and talking about the vocals or anything that comes to mind, so do be prepared for pauses. If I end up pausing too much for you, then feel free to click off of this video. You can let me know in the comments below, but I will continue stopping and talking about the vocals. <laughs> For those of you that do enjoy that kind of content, please do consider checking me out on Patreon as well. Thank you so much to those of you who are there already. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell button over here on my channel and let's just get straight to it. Have I made a mistake? Where are the Christmas songs? <laughs> That's gonna be me in a second. Uh. Bye. I'm gonna um, stop because we're already a minute in, in, minute, minute in, in, and copyright's gonna go. That was them with a the magnifying glass. I don't know. Okay, instantly I am hooked, scared, terrified for my life. I feel like it is kind of panning between both of the headphones, which is cool. Lots of repeated, distorted sounds. <laughs> and we're not even talking about the vocals yet, so let's go. Oh, oh. Bashed it into a mirror. What is this? What's going on? So I take my face and bash it into a mirror and won't have to see the pain. Okay, right. Okay, I'm getting that sort of vibe and feeling. Right, there's kind of like a, it's, there is a distortion in his voice. It's not coming from underneath though, like this kind of gravelly kind of, it feels like it's really hovering above. And I think that you don't want it to happen around the vocal folds. And when I feel like it's really heavy, it's when it's kind of really constricting in the vocal folds and we kind of, we're gonna end up getting pain. It's actually happening above. So it's around the false vocal folds. So if you are to do a little exercise with me, if you're sat down, if you, with your hands, pull up against like the chair and you push down, you get that kind of stop. And that's actually where that kind of distortion is kind of happening. But it's really like hovering. There's He's able to still include little cries in his voice, which is really interesting. Yeah, so it happens on Bash and Mera. Like you get that kind of like, like kind of almost Cookie Monster, but <laughs> a lot better. But let's go back to that cry. Away, kind of 
the and the why why i can't do it why <laughs> but it's kind of like he gets this distortion above and then he even allows he's able to then include a cry so it's not affecting the vocal folds it's happening around the true the false vocal folds sorry which lie above the true vocal folds i mean this there's a whole distortion on that line Mira as well Uh, okay, so he's hovering around this C uh, forehead, da, and then that top note is on that G4, which is way into his first passage. He's like, you know, and for those of you who are going, first passage, what? Uh, is the point in our vocals, uh, in our range, where we go from thicker folds, ah, uh, to thinner folds, right? Ah, uh, we get that kind of funky little break. But the fact that we're getting a lovely clear connection, connected sound up there, he can reach with his thicker folds, but eventually we're going to have to offer a little bit more of that mix quality in there, a bit more of a blend. What's really nice as well is that it does feel like a call, right? Da ba da, what word is it? I'm just going ba ba da. Oh. <laughs> He's swearing. <laughs> but balance <Berlin's> again. <laughs> beep, 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 beep. But it's on a lovely R vowel. <laughs> um, ah, so, and then because it's very emotive and he's calling it out, it kind of feels like, hey, ho, like we can call up there. So I know it's a bit low for me, but hey, hey, it would be the same equivalent to hey, like a C for me. Hey, and we can call that out and get a little bit more of a thicker connection, which is. It seems so easy. Okay, cool, interesting. Contrasting to his harsh vocals there as well, we had some lovely ah uh, in the background. Uh, nice legato, smooth ascending lines, which was nice. And he's also creating quite like a harsh vocal line. And, and it's, it's it, like I said before, with it being placed around the false vocal folds where he's bringing all this distortion. If we kept coming back to our um, true vocal folds, they would get tired and irritated very, very quickly. There's a lot of glottal onsets happening here as well. Like on the, all this time, I've been waiting. Oh, I cannot grew that. Ah, ah, there's lots of those happening. But also I think what's helping him um, to keep that connection on those, because glottals are quite hard because the connection is coming from our vocal folds, right? We don't get like a, a plosive or um, a fricative or something, you know, like a something to, grasp hold of that anchor point. So what he's using as well is this distortion. That's kind of a constant similarity through all these notes. He's grabbing hold of that feeling and making sure that that's kind of consistently there. So that in fact, he's actually like saving the vocal folds. He's not like squeezing them at all. Oh. Contrasting to what I was just about to say, actually, there for those two last words. Everything's quite bright um, and it's quite lifted as well. The diction is very good. I'm like, I know before I didn't really understand what was going on just then, but in this little section, we can hear everything that's going on. And I think that's to do with this brightness. Everything musically is quite like, um, well, heavily distorted and kind of repeated in the sense of those like stab, like it's real consistent with that kind of pattern happening musically and it kind of feels a lot lower but where his vocal line is it's not like the notes are incredibly high but because of where the music is and then his vocal line in order to kind of soar over the top of the music he's adding 
heaps of twang and brightness. Not incredible amounts that we kind of hear this ugly kind of sound, but he's allowing himself to kind of feel a little bit brighter with that twang so that we can hear the vocals, we can hear what he's saying. And then notice on, was it mine? Let's just see. Ah, it's the word vain. Vain, eh, I'm quite bright on that personally me, but he's kind of going, like darkening that sound. Interesting choice because it kind of completely contradicts what I just said, where he was keeping everything bright. And let's just see musically what's happening. Line. Line. Yeah, no, musically we haven't kind of like dipped down there, but we can hear that change in his voice. So he's chosen to create a different kind of sound there. And that's that drop of the larynx. So we probably had a lifted larynx a bit before, or it was neutral and we're just a bit lower now to create that difference. I would love to know what he sounds like when he talks because so far we've got a consistent, as I mentioned before, sometimes it can be a good thing because they're using it as their kind of base and comfort to keep going back to something that's so natural to someone, uh, to one's voice. But it'll be interesting to hear what he's like when he talks, where his vocal folds naturally want to go. So we can see how much he's, what he's doing now to change up uh, how he's sounding. It's really, it's quite nice because you can kind of like march along to this. <laughs> Uh, sound and he's really expressive with his arms he's using it it's kind of range wise and note wise with his voice it's very much like that's not what we're finding like impressive sometimes we listen to like a singer sing and they're building up these lovely high notes and we're like whoa but what's really fascinating here is that level of distortion and grit that he's getting in his voice and also just the emotion as he's kind of throwing away throwing away these words and kind of like is so spoken like that's why I'm just, that's why I'm really interested in to see what he sounds like when he talks okay where are we going now like it oh liking what's happening in the back. Okay. <laughs> Again, we've kind of gone back to these R vowels. Ah, and we're just... Okay, so we're on like harmonies with those R vowels as well, but we can hear this kind of progression happening. Um, and it it's nice because we don't associate legato notes with this sort of um, music. I know their genre is something else because it's an infusion of different kind of um, genres. Oh, down. <laughs> Up on that A4 up there uh, ah so very different this is okay cool so on this down which is just a tone higher than that kind of screen that we had earlier on let me just go back to that I remember when I said that was very spoken like very kind of thick fold and then here let's see where we go we'll talk about that as well down just a tone higher hey we're a lot more kind of offering a lot more of that head voice sound. We're heaps of twang down. We're not reaching up and kind of getting a thicker fold chest belt there. I mean, we're getting higher. So the vocal folds are stretching out and thinning out as we increase in pitch. But also here, very different quality to what we had before where I just said he was very like, I had a lot of grit in his voice. Now we're very clear. Uh, 
like a Now we're on the G. So again, we've just gone uh, a tone lower than that. Da. So if he was to put those two notes together, da was a bit more on that A ah kind of vowel. Da. We're still on that A ah vowel, but we're just grasping hold of a lot more of a chest fuller sound. So we are, this is a thing with the mixed voice. When, when we talk about the mixed voice, um, it can be a blend. It doesn't have to be a 50-50 blend. It, we can put more chest connection in there, less... Uh, chest connection in there depending on what sound we want. So this one had heaps more of a head voice sound, right? Down, and you can hear that difference too. Down, which sounds a lot more thicker, a lot more fuller, a lot more spoken-like. Like it's just calling out. Repeated G notes. Breathe any more, more. He's kind of like, ah. Oh, he kind of, he, it's like he's creating his own diphthong on the word more, more, and really opening. It just brings a, a bit more of a thicker kind of feel to it. The sound is a little bit more. I'm avoiding the word heavy because it's not heavy and is it's not like pulling up any heaviness with with his thicker with his vocal folds, but it sounds fuller. I do, I know it's coming towards the end anyway, but I like how we had kind of, again, contrasting with the ah, live anymore, which is the same notes, just in the other order, right? Um, but one is very smooth, connected, um, legato, and then we've got the live anymore with a lot of that kind of uh, false vocal fold distortion grit again. So it's kind of going back to that. I love that middle eight section though. So who was the, what, what happened to the, to the child at the beginning that he went through? Like what, did I miss that story? Well, I must admit that was rather different to the normal things that I react to, but I'm always open <laughs> to new music for myself. Um, yeah, what I really, really liked was that, like I said, it's that kind of consistent level of grit in his voice. But then in that middle eight section, we actually did have a lovely clear. Uh, what was also really fascinating, like we were talking about those two notes, they're just literally next door neighbors. Well, on the piano. <laughs> they're a tone apart, actually. How different they sound. And he, we don't know, in this particular song, we were going for a lot more of a head dominant sound on the A and then a more chest dominant sound on the G, which is really, really lovely. And I think that's what's really interesting as well is that yes, it's linked to our speaking voice, like our singing voice, they use the same muscles and it's very spoken like, but he's not pulling up to get, especially that G on that thicker kind of sound. Um, he's not pulling up at all. He is, it's very close to his like speech like quality and like he's calling, but he's not reaching up for that note, which is 
that's that's the most important thing because if you want to keep hitting that note if you keep reaching up then those muscles will be working more rather than keeping kind of relaxed and working on everything inside um, and kind of feeling that. Otherwise, as soon as we kind of like tense up, the vocal folds are gonna to wanna to reach up as well. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this reaction and analysis video. Thank you, Ian, for sending that my way. Uh, I'm always, like I said, open to reacting and just what, well, just listening to new music and seeing what I think. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell button and go over and check me out on Patreon and I'll see you very soon for another video. Bye.